With over 8,000 plus graduates, Galvanize and Hack Reactor are leading the industry in data science and software engineering education. In this series, we interview students in depth on their educational journey. This is Decode, my coding bootcamp story. Welcome to Decode, my coding bootcamp story. Today, we are interviewing Steven Zerfus, who graduated from our remote program. So let's get started. Steven, I'd like to start by asking you, what is your background before you came to Hack Reactor and what inspired you to learn to code? Before Hack Reactor, I was a management consultant primarily for nonprofits and philanthropists. Uh, and so that uh, meant that on a small team ranging from two to maybe up to seven people, we would work with some of the largest uh, nonprofits and philanthropists out, out there globally and uh, help them tackle questions like where they might expand next, what might be a new funding model, uh, what might be uh, some of their more impactful service lines that they might want to invest in or divest in others, uh, and a lot of uh, some of those higher level strategy questions. Uh, that, that background, uh, I, well, I, I did that for about three years, and then um, over time, a few things came about that led me eventually to take what was a pretty big pivot into jumping into Hack Reactor. Was there any one moment that inspired you to go learn software engineering or was it kind of, I just wanted to learn a new skill and that just happened to be it? Uh, many different moments that added up to uh, the finally the big decision. It was a fairly gradual process. I knew that I didn't want to stay in consulting forever. I wanted to become an operator, not an advisor. And I had the sense that I was developing skills about bringing a leadership team into alignment uh, or uh, collaborating effectively, structured thinking, structured communication that would be effective multiplier skills. But the question for me was, what am I gonna multiply? And uh, that uh, uh, question I think was, was percolating in the back of my mind for a few years and a few patterns began to, began to emerge. One was that I was gravitating towards more technical projects. So thinking about the models for various investments that might play out over the course of several years for my clients back then. Um, this, uh, a second thing that, that I noticed was that there was a large gap of talent around hard technical skills in the social sector. A lot of uh, my, my friends here in the San Francisco Bay Area were effective engineers or product managers, but there seemed to be few of those working for, on some of the most important social sector challenges. And I figured, well, this is interesting. It's something I might be a little interested in and there's big need that usually speaks of an opportunity, something that I might look into down the line. Uh, and then uh, gradually a number of other things came into play, like the idea of building a career, not just based on one deep skill set, but perhaps two deep skill sets. So consulting on the one hand, uh, getting technical engineering on the other. Uh, and then I, I first actually moved into product. Uh, I was a product manager for a small startup. And while I was looking for my next product role, I started uh, uh, learning to code on the side to make myself a more attractive candidate and just had too much fun. Uh, and so at that point, I finally decided to take the plunge and go all in on becoming an engineer as opposed to just a product manager. That's so cool. So from there, uh, after deciding to take the plunge, uh, you got into the bootcamp program, but obviously that is a level of intensity that uh, a lot of people don't anticipate. Um, when you were in the program, did you have any strategies to manage your time and stress? I definitely did. And that is, uh, it is you are, uh, it's an understatement to say that bootcamp was intense. Uh, I, I knew that going in and was something I was really looking forward to because I figured that intensity would be necessary and, and really an opportunity to make this pivot as, as fast as possible. I had a finite amount of uh, financial runway uh, before I was going to be uh, unable to pay rent. And so I needed this to be as intense as I as could get. Uh, but I, uh, knowing that it was going to be intense is one thing. It's another thing to one, prepare yourself for that intensity. And then two, I think, uh, take full advantage of the opportunity that's uh, uh, that the bootcamp is while you're in it. So uh, the the two different things that I think I focused on while I was uh, in bootcamp was my uh, mental health and well-being on the one hand, and then effective learning on the other. And so for mental health and well-being, uh, I kept strict bedtimes. I meditated an hour every morning, preferably in loving kindness style, which I found has the biggest boost on my well-being. Uh, and I uh, didn't skip a single workout break. I actually did once and immediately paid the price. And so I didn't skip again after that. Uh, and the, those were, all, I think, all good for my well-being, uh, the sustaining vote of the program. Uh, and then it just straight up the physical nature of it. Uh, the workouts and the sleep were important to prevent repetitive stress industry, or, uh, injuries, not industries. 
And uh, I think there's also a fair bit of evidence, uh, which is um, uh, a good fortune, about what sleep and workout uh, and meditation as well offer for learning. On the learning side of the house, uh, in addition to those things, every evening I would uh, spend some time reflecting on what went well during the, the day and what could have gone better. And uh, that was a, 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 it's a tactic um, uh, that I think, you know, it seems very, fairly common sense. There's also a fair bit of research about it. Scott Young in his book about ultra learning talks about the importance of meta learning and spending 10% of your time thinking about your actual learning process to make sure you're getting the most of it. Uh, there's research on deliberate practice that highlights the importance of, of uh, time for reflection to really soak up and make the, make the most of learning. Uh, and so I think that was ended up being a really uh, big key habit too. Clearly you are somebody who is very purposeful with their learning habits. Uh, and I'd like to ask you, because you also have this, this traditional college background, um, as somebody who graduated from both a traditional college and an educational boot camp, what would you consider to be the pros and cons of each? And would you say there's benefits from learning from both? That's a tough question. I don't feel as if college and boot camps are hardly comparable. Uh, the college, uh, for a start, is over 10x the amount of time. It's typically uh, done between the ages of 18 and 22 uh, in person with a boatload of peers going through the same um, very transformative period of their life as they move into adulthood for the first time. And so I, I think it's safe to say that the vast majority of the college experience happens outside the classroom and outside learning a uh, even very particular skills. I think I, I heard somewhere that you, you might be lucky if you remember 20% of your undergraduate. I think 20% would be pretty darn good. Uh, there's, uh, so, so that, that being said, if we push all that to the side and we think about, well, what's the slice of college that might be most applicable to boot camp? I think it probably is around this learning process, the, the, the element of, of learning new content uh, and perhaps also developing some skills that go along with that content. The, and, and perhaps in the your more traditional classroom environment, uh, that kind of thing. I think that my college experience might have more, I might have a fair bit to learn from my boot camp experience. And I say that uh, with a couple, kind of two things in mind. Specifically, the boot camp model uh, is one in which uh, everything is project based and you are thrown in over your head. And those two things together, I think, have pretty big implications for uh, learning comprehension, like comprehension and understanding the material on the one hand, uh, and then also retention uh, on the other. So uh, when you're thrown in over your head and it's project-based, what you're pushed to your limits, and, uh, and when it's project-based, you are always learning something right at the moment in which it is useful, and your motivation for learning that thing is highest. That, I think, is really a um, critical aspect to the learning journey that is sometimes missing from a more traditional classroom environment. If you can link the, the point of motivation to the moment in which you want to do your learning, uh, that, I think, is, is both good for speed, and com uh, speed of comprehension and uh, long-term retention. So I, I think I would say that uh, colleges, which have plenty of uh, opportunity and, and do lots and lots of project-based work, uh, uh, no doubt have, have tackled this, that, that aspect or that kind of pedagogical strategy. Uh, but I think my boot camp experience did that very, very well. And I think my college experience could have, could have learned a little bit more from that. Going on uh, that tangent, uh, but talking specifically about what you learned, um, you have a background in finance and now a background in software engineering. And I'm kind of curious, how have you been able to use those two things in tandem since graduating? I mentioned earlier this idea that I, while I was a consultant, I had the sense that I was building these, a generalist skill set, a skill set that could be applied anywhere, getting up to speed quickly, uh, thinking in a structured manner, communicating in a structured manner, and that that would be a terrific multiplier skill set. And the question was, what am I going to multiply? Uh, and I think that, that that thinking of those of my consulting skill set on one hand and my technical skill set that is emerging on the other uh, still holds today. I find that when I, uh, I was able to get up to speed relatively quick as a new employee uh, here at Lyft, uh, in, in addition to being a new engineer, uh, I was uh, able to be a tech lead on a project and collaborate with a large number of individuals and, and think through how I needed to uh, get different inputs from different teams at different times. Uh, I think in part because of my past experience. And uh, so I, I see them playing uh, uh, very complementary roles and I'm really excited that they're, it, things are working out that way. 
the other thing I'd, I'd say on that front is uh, there's a quote by Scott Adams, who is the uh, comic book, uh, he's the, the guy who writes the Dilbert comics. And he has a quote that says, uh, it's really, really something to this effect. It's really hard to be the top 1% at any given, in any given field or at any given skill. But if you were, if you were in the top 80% in two different skills, almost is quite likely that you'll end up being the top 1% at the intersection of the two. Uh, that was one of a few different thoughts that led me to uh, think about building a career not based off just one skill, but multiple skills uh, back when I decided to move out of consulting. And it's one that I think uh, early signs are that it's playing out that way today. And, and I'm pretty excited about that. That's amazing. And kind of going into it just a little bit more, um, what would you say your favorite aspect is at your job right now? I got a great job. <laughs> uh, I think the, the biggest uh, my most favorite thing is the fact that this uh, continues to be, this is the next chapter on a journey in which uh, stoking and, and feeding and uh, learning from my curiosity just continues to, to compound. Uh, the being curious leads to opportunities to learn more, which leads to more opportunities to be curious, which leads to more opportunities to learn more. Uh, and that I think is a, is a real treat. I often feel like I'm a, uh, like a kid in a candy shop as I get to uh, jump in and learn the new aspects of the Python internals that have remained elusive for me for the last couple of weeks and I'm finally cracking that part of the puzzle. Uh, so that, that I think is, is my favorite part. The other um, piece to this that goes, I think is true for any job is that the, the people you work with, I think are disproportionately responsible for both how much you enjoy the experience, your well-being, and how much you learn. And I think I lucked out in the sense that I'm on, with a, a team of engineers working on some problems that we think are interesting and important. And most of these engineers are uh, more senior than I am and yet also willing to uh, uh, work with me and warmly support me and extend help as I need it. Uh, and uh, have a good time along the way. So uh, in that sense, I'm a very lucky guy. That's just so great to hear. I'm, I'm glad all that hard work finally paid off. Um, you know, I think uh, the only other thing I want to ask is, you know, for all those folks out there that are just starting their learning process to become a software engineer, um, is there any advice you'd give to those, those younger software engineers that are just at, the, at their start? Stay curious. I think that is the, um, the number one uh, and maybe most important thing you can do. That's, I think, true for all software engineers and true for uh, anybody that's um, uh, looking to either pivot careers or uh, invest in developing a new skill. And that, I think that curiosity pays off in a handful of ways. It, it is a big part of that kind of fun, loving loop that I was talking about earlier where curiosity leads to more learning, which leads to more curiosity. Um, I think uh, it allows you to also begin to see uh, every aspect of the journey as part of the puzzle and part of the opportunity. And so when you go to boot camp, it's not just going to boot camp to learn to code, but it's going to boot camp to figure out and figure out how you might relate with a bunch of different people from a bunch of different backgrounds, how you might become the best uh, pair programmer out there, not just uh, the most technically proficient person in your, in your cohort, uh, how you might solve the puzzle of navigating the intensity of something like that. Uh, of 12 to 14 hours a day, six days a week. How you might also make sure that uh, the average retention level at bootcamp is, is X, but you want it to be Y. So how can you be curious about making that a little bit better? Um, and then the other thing I'd, I'd say about curi curiosity is I think the best curiosity is also self-compassionate curiosity. Uh, and so if you have this sense of that um, everything is a puzzle to be solved and all kinds of different failures are um, opportunities to learn and to grow, and you couple that with self-compassionate habits in which you respond to failure, not with an instinctive, which I think is, is really hard to do, much easier said than done. Uh, we usually respond to failure with, damn it, like I, I wish I had done that better or I didn't get that quite right this time or I wasn't fast enough. If instead, at the, even in the very moment in which you sense failure, you're able to instead respond with, ooh, well that's fun. Or, uh, oh, my, like uh, that, that part of me that uh, was really good at thinking through the um, nitty gritty code structure. Uh, thank you for bringing that to the table. I realized I missed it on the efficiency side this time, or I didn't, I didn't uh, have some of the bigger uh, concepts at play. And that, that more like softer, happier self-talk, uh, I think uh, also is a big part of um, uh, curiosity at its best. 
Of course. Well, Stephen, I just want to say thank you for joining us today and really appreciate your time. Uh, it sounds like you're in a great spot and it's it's just great to hear that learning process really pays off. I'm uh, grateful that it's 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 been a fun learning journey so far and will continue to be. Thanks for joining us. This has been Decode, my coding bootcamp story. If you'd like to know more about our programs, please visit galvanize.com or email us at admissions at galvanize.com. 